Between 1945 and 1975, Indochina was racked by one of the longest and most bitter wars of the century. The battle for Vietnam drew in millions of soldiers, Vietnamese, French, American, Australian, Korean and British, and profoundly affected the lives of vast numbers of civilians. The American War, which lasted from 1960 to 1975, was a conflict fought with extreme ferocity and destructiveness. There was on the ground a guerrilla war of firefights, merciless search and destroy operations, and endless sieges. And also an air war of extreme intensity. Eight million tons of bombs wrought havoc on the landscape and people. The war that cost 1.3 million lives, including 58,000 American dead, was about much more than the fate of one small country. 20 years before the first American combat soldier set foot in Vietnam, the seeds for America's war had been sown. With the partitioning of Europe, East and West, after World War II, the Western powers were on the alert for communist gains in the territories of the old empires. Soviet expansion in Europe was perceived as the greatest threat. In October 1949, Mao Zedong proclaimed the People's Republic of China. The battle lines of the Cold War were now clearly drawn. To American strategists, the communist victory in China fueled the fear of Soviet and communist expansion. At stake, they believed, were economic interests throughout Asia and the Pacific and U.S. communication and trade links to the Indian Ocean. President Eisenhower believed that one Asian country falling to communism would bring down its neighbors in a domino effect. Soviet and Chinese power would advance southwards until even the Australian continent was threatened. It was Indochina that seemed to hold the key to the future of Southern Asia. The region bordered the newly created Chinese People's Republic and was still a French colony. French strategy was to hold on to power by creating puppet states in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. The biggest obstacle to the French plan was the Viet Minh, a huge Vietnamese independence movement. In September 1945, under the leadership of Ho Chi Minh, the Vietnamese League for Independence, known as the Viet Minh, took Hanoi from the Japanese occupying forces and declared independence for the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. In the south, the Japanese surrendered to the British. However, France still considered Vietnam her colony. 
General Gracie, the British commander, ordered the Japanese rearmed to fight the Viet Minh to retake the colony. Thus the French Indochina War began. In the war between the French and the Viet Minh, the United States had until recently stayed strictly neutral. U.S. officials had originally supported the Viet Minh and its leader Ho Chi Minh. And they also strongly opposed the French attempt to keep their old colony. However, that was before the rise of communist China. Now, the fear was that if the Viet Minh beat the French, they would open the door to the Chinese and the Soviets. Cold War politics had come to Vietnam. The Soviet Union and China recognized the Viet Minh as the only legitimate government of Vietnam in January 1950. Already China was giving Ho Chi Minh arms, ammunition and training bases. The United States, for its part, recognized a French creation, the state of Vietnam, and U.S. President Harry Truman approved a program of military and economic help. But even before the order was signed, the situation changed dramatically. In June 1950, war broke out in Korea. Communist northern forces, backed by the Soviet Union and China, invaded the South and the U.S. sent troops to intervene. By October, American units were locked in combat with Chinese divisions on the Korean battlefield. Now, it seemed to the United States more important than ever to contain China on every possible front. That meant a massive increase in backing for the French in Vietnam. By 1953, a year into the presidency of Dwight D. Eisenhower, U.S. support for the French war against the Viet Minh had turned into a flood of arms and cash. The United States paid three quarters of the cost, a staggering one billion dollars in 1954. The problem was that even with colossal American aid, the French were failing to beat the Viet Minh. The guerrillas now numbered 120,000 trained troops, backed by 200,000 local fighters. As French casualties passed 50,000, in France, the public grew weary of the seemingly endless war. There were calls for negotiations with the Viet Minh. Pressure for talks grew even greater as the conflict in...